After Democratic Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey was indicted for various crimes over the weekend, an unlikely person came to his defense, disgraced Republican congressman and fellow federal indictee George Santos. But before we unpack all that, if you haven't yet, please hit that like, subscribe, and the alert bell. Maybe check out my Patreon. I'd appreciate the support. All right, folks, so we discussed over the weekend Bob Menendez of New Jersey, a very powerful Democratic senator who until Friday was the chairman of the very powerful Senate Foreign Relations Committee, was indicted by the Department of Justice. I think it was conspiracy to commit bribery, conspiracy to commit fraud, conspiracy to commit extortion. And Bob Menendez has a very checkered past with respect to corruption. He was credibly indicted about a decade ago and only skirted justice because of a hung jury. And these particular indictments, which were announced over the weekend or near the weekend, concern an entirely different set of facts and circumstances. So even though he's entitled to the presumption of innocence with respect to our justice, system, many people, a lot of progressive lefty liberal commentators, myself included, have called on him to resign. And an increasing number of his Democratic peers in Congress are also calling on him to resign. But, and he may take heart in this, he does have somebody in his corner. He does have somebody who is willing to publicly say that we should give Bob Menendez the benefit of the doubt. And that is disgraced Republican congressman and fellow federal indictee, George Santos. So let's watch the clip. Do you think Senator Menendez should resign, given his indictment? I don't have an opinion on that. Why not? Because I think uh, due process uh, is important, and I think he has the right to defend himself. He's innocent until proven guilty. This, the media has to stop acting like everybody is guilty at, uh, before they're even ju judged at by a jury. So, no, I, I think everybody is innocent until proven guilty. When, when did we walk away from the fabric of our Constitution that everybody has a presumption of innocence before anything else? So I don't, I don't think he should resign. Okay. No? Thank you. Thanks. So that was George Santos, who, again, has been federally indicted as well. Now, I'll give, him, I'll give him something here. For a man who is a pathologically lying fraud, in this respect, I suppose he's kind of consistent. It's self-serving, right? Because he, of course, is under federal indictment in multiple ways. Uh, this was a press release from back in May. Um, he's been charged for fraud, money laundering, theft of public funds, and false statements. And the investigations are ongoing. Now, he, of course, has denied all of these things, even though, there, again, there's compelling evidence to indicate Santos is corrupt as hell as well. But because of the backlash he's been facing, he also has declared, listen, I'm entitled to the presumption of innocence. I'm entitled to due process. Now, all of these things are true. They apply to Santos and they apply to Menendez. But the thing is this. Nobody is saying that Santos or Menendez should be jailed. Um, without the presumption of due process and the presumption of innocence, right? There should be no criminal punishment for their crimes unless their crimes are proven in our justice system and they are convicted accordingly. But these are high public officials serving their constituents. And there's a compelling case to be made that when there's such a cloud hanging over you and such compelling evidence already that you're profoundly corrupt, as Menendez and Santos undoubtedly are, you should probably do the right thing and resign. You're still entitled, again, in terms of the justice system to the presumption of innocence, but that's a separate matter to your political career. Now, with respect to Menendez, and again, an increasing number of people are calling on him to resign. John Fetterman, the Democratic senator of uh, Pennsylvania, uh, Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez of New York is also uh, calling on him to resign. But here's one that stood out to me. Republican Speaker of the House, so different chamber, because Menendez is in the Senate, uh, Kevin McCarthy's in the House of Representatives, the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, is calling on Menendez to resign, okay? Now, what I find interesting about that is because, whereas ironically, George Santos, of all people, and again, in a very nakedly self-serving way, is being consistent, he thinks he's entitled to the presumption of due process and the presumption of innocence, ergo Menendez is, Kevin McCarthy is cherry-picking his standard, so when asked, um, it was on Saturday, um, should Menendez resign after he was indicted on alleged federal bribery charges? Indicted, not convicted, indicted. Uh, McCarthy says, yeah, very much so. Okay, and yet, and yet, it's curious because it brings us back to Santos himself. When it's George Santos, a member of his party in his chamber of Congress, Kevin McCarthy won't call on George Santos to resign. Republican leaders stand behind Santos after his indictment. Speaker Kevin McCarthy has signaled that the New York congressman will be allowed to continue to serve even after being indicted on several federal charges. Now, 
again, because Kevin McCarthy is an unprincipled hack who's desperate to cling to power, he's tried to have it both ways. He's gone on the record saying he won't endorse George Santos for re-election and that he, sh- that he shouldn't run for re-election, but he hasn't called on Santos to you know uh, resign in disgrace. I don't think he's also committed to having Santos expelled from the House of Representatives if these investigations, um, like the House, he's currently under investigation, for example, by the House Ethics Committee in parallel to the investigation being conducted by the Department of Justice. So when it comes to his party and his political needs, Kevin McCarthy wants to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Listen, if you're a corrupt Republican, if you've been indicted for fraud and embezzlement and, and you know money laundering and all the various litany of corrupt acts that George Santos has attributed to him, well, it's okay. You, you're entitled to due process and the presumption of innocence. But when Menendez, a Democratic senator, is indicted similarly, not convicted, but similarly, well, no, you should go ahead and resign, right? It's situational ethics, right? Kevin McCarthy, of course, has no principle. He just cares about the raw application of power. It would be good for Republicans to keep their slim margin in uh, the House, right? So he needs Santos. And it would also be good for Republicans if Democrats had one fewer Democratic senator. Now, as we've discussed, if Menendez does resign, which he should, the Democratic governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy, would be able to uh, appoint a replacement, which would be presumably, uh, you know, a progressive Democrat, hopefully even much more progressive and much less corrupt than Bob Menendez, to fill the remainder of Menendez's term. But anyway, the, the, the dynamics at play here are something I found interesting. He's defended by George Santos, who is somebody you would never want to defend you under any circumstances. As corrupt as Menendez is, he's probably like, oh, George, just shut up. Don't, don't help me out here. You're not doing me any favors. And ironically, in a weird way, it's Santos who is being consistent in his ethics, appalling though they may be, and misplaced though they may be. Because again, you know, your political career has nothing to do with your you know, with your entitlement to due process under criminal law. And it's Kevin McCarthy who is picking and choosing who should resign and who should remain in power. Very interesting stuff. I'm sure we will see more instances of hypocrisy as this story unfolds because it really has just begun for Bob Menendez.